guide the rest of Indian industry. First of all, let's go back in time. Do you remember the Apollo mission? One small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. This was a feat of technology. We grew up marveling at how much the human race had advanced and how we were able to now land a man on the moon. It was a technology marvel. Do you know what this technology was? What was behind it was the Apollo guidance computer. The Apollo guidance computer had the same computing power as today's musical greeting card. This is what got us to the moon. Today, we're marveling at the NASA rover Curiosity. We're getting back these beautiful images from Mars, and we're marveling at how far technology has advanced. Do you know what's on Mars? Something which is about one-sixth of the processing power of your iPhone. It's a two-megapixel camera. Two-megapixel cameras, these cheap phones you buy in New Delhi are more powerful than that. This is what's on Mars right now. We're era in an era of exponentially advancing technologies. This chart shows you how tech has been advancing for the last thousands of years. It took thousands of years to go from pottery to agriculture to the plow to mathematics. For the last 200 years, there's been major advance after major advance after major advance. We human beings do not understand what this means. Look at how the telephone has evolved. I mean, I remember coming to Delhi and having to wait days to make a phone call to the USA. It would cost a fortune. Now you have beggars who have phones that can call anywhere in the world, and it costs practically nothing. If you remember Michael Douglas from Wall Street, that phone he held in his hand was the ultimate symbol of power. Literally, beggars in Delhi have better devices than that today. This is how it's advanced. And look at all the things that it now does. These devices all fit in your pocket. The Sony Walkman, the game players, the TV sets, typewriters, cameras, encyclopedias, they all fit in your pockets, and they're free features on your smartphone. But I don't think you realize that your phone is also becoming a medical device now. To start with, it's an encyclopedia of medical knowledge. You have all the knowledge of the world available to you for free on your phone. It's also a glucose meter. I don't know about the uh, stores over here, but you can go to Walmart in the USA. For $30, you can buy a glucose meter that connects to your iPhone. For $75, you can buy a heart monitor, an EKG machine that connects to your iPhone. If you go to the Apple store in Palo Alto, if you ever happen to visit there, you'll see an entire chest filled with medical instruments. Who would have ever imagined that a technology store would be selling medical devices? But that is how it has advanced. Medicine is becoming digital and information technology. Everything which becomes information goes exponential. So medicine itself is now becoming a digital technology and, and IT. Soon, we'll have AI physicians. When you have data, when you have uh, information, the next thing you do is you use artificial intelligence to analyze the data. We will have doctors in our pocket that monitor to us 24-7 and that advise us on our health. This will happen within five years from now. There will be apps that now are your personal physicians in your pockets. And the biggest advance of all is in genomics. About 15 years ago, there was a race between the US government and a scientist, Craig Venter, to sequence the human genome. The US government and affiliated labs spent $2.75 billion on getting there. Venter spent $100 million, and he won the race using government data. What cost $3 billion then costs $1,000 now. At the rate at which this technology is advancing, within five years, I'll have an iPhone case that does a complete human genome sequence. It'll be practically free. The significance of this is that we have become data, and our doctors are becoming software. So even the human beings are now becoming IT. Start thinking about what I said. India claims to be an IT superpower. Indian IT companies have built multi-hundred million dollar, have built a hundred billion dollar industry. Health itself has become an IT now. This is an opportunity. We're entering an era of genomic medicine in which medicine is prescribed based on the individual, based on your genomic information. So in other words, instead of seeing a doctor who spends three minutes with you and advises, every patient to take the same medicine, you will now have advice based on your genetic profile, your genome, based on your microbiome, which is an ecosystem within your body, based on your medical history, and your lifestyle and your habits. All of these will be factors in the medical care that you get in the 2020s, in the next 10-year time frame. And then bionic enhancements. In the USA, there was a TV series called The Six Million Dollar Man, in which um, uh, you know, uh, a person got superhuman vision, superhuman uh, hearing, and bionic limbs. Here's a prediction for me. 
that Steve Austin, the $6 million man, the bionic man, becomes a reality in 2030, 15 years from now. Steve Austin doesn't cost $6 million, he costs $6,000. Because what happens is that as technology advances, it becomes smaller and it becomes cheaper. Everything is becoming exponentially cheaper. Which means that we will, in the next 15 years or so, have bionic enhancements that give us superhuman capabilities. We will almost all be able to afford these enhancements. What's making it possible are advances in sensors. For example, the, the first digital camera came out in 1975. It weighed about four kilos. It cost $10,000. It was a whopping point zero one megapixels. What you have in your pockets today is roughly one billion times better than what you had in 1975. The big advantage that America had, it would not export this technology, was the uh, guidance system in its intercontinental ballistic missiles. You remember the nuclear missiles that gave the US its strategic advantage over the whole world? It could nuke any country any time. It was in an arms race with Russia or the Soviet Union over nuclear missiles. The technology behind that were the accelerometers and gyroscopes. Those cost tens of millions of dollars. Now they cost less than a dollar and they're features in your smartphone. The first GPS came out in 1981. It cost $120,000 and weighed about 53 pounds. Today you can go on Alibaba and buy several of these for less than a dollar. For 50 rupees or less, you can buy a, a GPS, which is a billion times better than what we had in 1981. A billion time improvement between 1981 and today. If you took your smartphone apart, and please do not do this at home, you would find in it sensors that would have weighed hundreds of pounds and cost hundreds of thousands of dollars just 30 or 40 years ago. And here's what's become smart cities. You know, the Indian government talks about smart cities. They have no idea what they're talking about. We can build the smart cities that we were reading about a few years ago, the $25 billion smart cities in Saudi Arabia and the Middle East, in which everything was connected together. You can build those now for millions of dollars, not billions of dollars. You can now start building traffic monitors, pollution monitors, noise. All these uh, devices are inexpensive. You could start taking Delhi and turning it into a smart city, neighborhood by neighborhood, and it would cost uh, you know, a few crore uh, rupees, not uh, you know, hundreds of crores or rupees. This is what's become possible. And then robotics. As of 2015, it became cheaper to manufacture goods in the United States than in China. This is a major change that happened with robotics. Narendra Modi talks about made in India. He also has no clue what he's talking about. The real opportunity for made in India is using robots, because robots are dirt cheap right now, and they have the flexibility of a human being. That robot over there, Yumi, costs $40,000. It can thread a needle. It can do circuit board assembly. It can work 24-7 without complaining, without forming labor unions. And you can buy it from Switzerland right now for $40,000. Google is building humanoid robots. So I'm talking about robots like what we saw in science fiction being available in the 2020s. Chauffeurs, self-driving cars. Where I live in Silicon Valley, in Mountain View, we already have self-driving cars going around the roads. Before, people would stop to take pictures with them. Now they get angry and cut the car off because the car follows road rules. So soon, in the next five years or so, we will have self-driving cars in most of the world. I don't know about India, because I don't know if God would even want to drive over here or not. <laughs> 3D printing. You can 3D print plastic, glass, titanium, human cells. These are all 3D printed objects. You can 3D print cars, 3D printed houses. In the 2020s, we will be 3D printing houses, 3D printing buildings. Imagine now recreating the most ancient structures from Indian history using 3D printers. You don't need craftsmen anymore. You can just uh, visualize them or take some of the old paintings we had and 3D print those structures. The entire city is being 3D printed. This will happen in the late 2020s. NASA has been more ambitious. It's, for the last 10 years or so, it's been talking about printing space stations on Mars, on the moon, printing colonies there before we get on, on the planet. This is what NASA is working on right now. And then the big uh, change that's going to happen over the next three or four years is virtual reality. Imagine now watching me in 2020 giving a talk, except I happen to be in Palo Alto. And you're sitting here or sitting at home 
wearing headsets that take you into virtual worlds. Imagine now having lunch on the moon, or now visiting Switzerland um, uh, when you wake up and, and have breakfast. This is going to be possible over the next two or three or four years. These devices will become inexpensive, and even the beggars will be using them in the 2020s. This is how technology is advancing. 